So this morning I got an early start. I sat down at my computer and was getting ready to write a Medium article and then I noticed this little pop-up in the corner. Turns out the little pop-up was in my ChatGPT window uh, and is a new feature. They're calling it GPT Mentions, which is kind of a funny name because it's actually a huge feature and it sounds like a small feature. So basically, if you've used custom GPTs before, you'll know you open that GPT in a new conversation, you can talk to it. If you wanna use a different custom GPT with different custom instructions and different context, then you have to open up a new conversation. But now with this new feature, you don't have to have separate conversations anymore. Uh, you just type the at symbol and then you mention the custom GPT that you wanna bring into the conversation and then it is able to actually reply to you. Not only that, every custom GPT that you bring into the conversation can see the entire conversation context, which means they can actually technically talk to one another. So now, without further ado, let's try it out. I've always wanted to do this. So this is a vanilla chat GPT prompt. And now if we type at in the input box down here, you can see different custom GPTs that you've tried recently. Here for my agentic Minecraft project, I've created a coder GPT, a reviewer GPT, and a tech lead GPT. Another thing to note before we get started is make sure you clear any custom instructions that you normally have for ChatGPT. Uh, I've noticed that these can interfere with the instructions of the custom GPTs. So I'm going to start by enabling the tech lead GPT. This is a GPT that's responsible for creating tasks for the other GPTs. Um, not sure if this is 100% necessary, but since I'm talking to multiple GPTs in the same conversation, I've started the practice of just starting with a tag indicating who I'm talking to, just in case the models don't really see which GPT I'm directing each question to. So tech lead step, and then the first question I'm going to ask is, we need to implement the full class diagram and sequence diagram. What is the first task? So these are diagrams that I've already provided to each of these GPTs, and basically that's the, the software design. Now you can see it's constructing the first task. The task that the tech lead GPT has chosen to tackle first is initializing the agent class. You can see here, implement the basic structure of the agent class, write JavaScript, uh, agent.js, and it describes what that class is going to look like. So here's the, the real magic of the feature. I'm gonna type at again and select the coder now. And now all we have to do to get the coder to work on this task is implement the task. It says it's gonna provide us with the JavaScript that we need to create the agent class, and there it goes. So now here's the, the full code that the coder GPT created. You can see it's a very basic shell, actually not much in there. Um, I've also noticed it said in testing, test this, to test this class, you can create an instance of agent in another JavaScript file and call its methods to ensure they exist and do not cause errors. Really, we want the coder agent to actually generate the test code so that we don't have to do that. It's very simple code for the model to generate. Um, so I'm interested to see if the reviewer GPT picks up on that. So I'm gonna type at and then go to Agentic Minecraft Reviewer. Again, all of these GPTs have access to the diagrams uh, so they know what the design of the software should be. Review the code just generated. And now it's giving us its observations and feedback in a code review. So now looking through the full code review, you can see at the end here, it has a specific suggestions section. So this is something that I provided in the custom GPT's instructions is that it needs to provide specific, specific suggestions, um, not just like general ideas. 
Um, so the, the three things that it points out, and I, I found that this is often the first three things that it notices in GPT generated code, uh, more documentation, error handling, uh, and testing and debugging. So that's what I talked about before. It's saying you actually need to implement the unit tests for each method to ensure that they function as expected. So that's what we want from the coder GPT. Um, so let's just go ahead and send it right back to the coder. Implement the review suggestions. It says it's going to add more detailed documentation, placeholders for error handling and validation, comments for future unit test integration. So in this case, it may not actually generate the unit test. Um, I need to, I may need to, to play a role as the human here and actually tell it to generate the integration test. Sorry, unit test. Yeah, so I've noticed here at the bottom, the coder says, when further implementation is done, write unit tests for each method to ensure they work as expected. Uh, basically, it's saying that this class is so simple that it doesn't really need a unit test at this point, um, which, which I generally agree with. So I would say, let's continue with this, and we'll go back to the tech lead um, to generate another task. Please create the next task to be implemented. So I just realized I completely forgot to add the tags that I talked about to each step in this conversation, but it seems to be understanding the conversation just fine. So clearly that was just a bit of paranoia on my part. Um, <clears throat> here's the next task from the tech lead agent. Um, implement the basic structure of the sensory state class. So this is now basically going to create another shell class for sensory state like it did for, for agent.js. I like the fact that it's splitting it up into files. Um, when I've tried this in the past, it, it always hasn't, it hasn't always tried to split it up into files. It's sometimes put it all in one file. Um, that said, it's, it's giving me a little less detail in this run than, than it has in the past. So we'll see if we can get it to go a bit more deep, a uh, bit deeper. All right, so we're gonna pass this task back to the coder, implement the task. Again, pretty basic shell code here. Let's go ahead and do the review. Pretty similar suggestions to before. Let's just jump right into coding. So here's the new implementation after the code review of stage two. Um, it actually did make some improvements. So it, it saved some of this environment data into its um, member variables. However, it still has not decided to actually write the unit tests. Uh, so obviously it's trained to act like a real developer in that, uh, in that instance. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tell it to write the unit tests it does learn within the context of this, this conversation itself. So uh, an example of that would be the second code that the coder created. You can see it automatically, with, without being told by the reviewer, added the doc strings, whereas the initial code that it had created in the first step did not have doc strings. So it's learned based on the initial review feedback that each time it needs to add doc strings. And so it, it will learn similarly if I tell it to actually write the unit tests. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, all right, so we finally have some unit test code here. I did copy it into a file and actually run the test and there is a syntax error. So rather than pasting in the output, which sort of puts me in the loop, um, I'm gonna see if it will run this code in its internal code interpreter and figure out what the issue is for itself. I'd rather it be able to work through problems on its own rather than rely on me for the testing. So I'm gonna say, please run this test in your code interpreter and debug. 
So its response to me was basically, hey dummy, I can't run JavaScript code, <laughs> which of course I should have known. Uh, its internal environment can only run Python code, um, so it can't run this unit test. Um, I then pasted in the actual output from my command window and explained what the issue is, um, missing a particular test framework that it's using for the unit tests. Uh, I like that it's using this unit test. It's teaching me about the unit test structure, uh, or the unit test uh, framework, which I didn't know about before. Um, so I'll have to look into this later and get it all installed. Don't have time to go through it now. Now that we've sent the conversation down this sidetrack, let's see how easily the model is able to uh, get back on course. Let's go back to the tech lead. I'm going to say uh, create the next task. All right, the next task is to create the other class that was in the sequence diagram, policystate.js. Uh, let's go ahead and implement that. Again, <clears throat> the coder agent chose not to implement the unit test automatically. Um, I think this is probably just something that I need to update in the custom instructions for the GPT. Um, I either need to tell the tech lead agent that it needs to specify write the unit test uh, as part of the task acceptance criteria. Um, that's probably what I would try first. Otherwise, I could update the uh, coder agent to always um, write unit tests for anything that it writes. That's slightly less preferable to me. Um, I would rather that it was actually part of the task. All right, so I realized if the model is gonna create all these shell classes first, this is gonna be a very long, boring video. Uh, so I went ahead and, and went through a bunch of different tasks. Uh, so generating tasks, implementing, generating, implementing. Um, to save on usage, I cut out the review step. Basically, I can act as the reviewer. In this case, I didn't really need to. Um, but so I'll just walk through what the tech lead and the coder working together were able to achieve. Um, First, they created a shell for the harvest wood policy. So this is a particular policy that the agent can choose uh, choose to act according to within the, the Minecraft environment. Um, <clears throat> next, it was the, uh, the tech lead said to integrate the agent.js in sensory state. Um, so this is important because now it's remembering that it needs to go back to agent.js and fill in the details. Um, so I was happy to see this as the next step rather than just continuing to create shell classes indefinitely, um, which it, it could have chosen to do. Um, <clears throat> so here you see we're now uh, creating a sensory state object inside the agent class uh, and put in some, some mock data in here that it can then update the sensory state with. Eventually, ideally, it would actually use the MindFlayer API um, to sense the environment of the bot within Minecraft, um, but obviously that can be a later implementation step. Um, <clears throat> next up, uh, now that we've integrated the sensory state with the agent, is to integrate the policy state with the agent. Again, at each step here, I'm just saying create the task, implement the task. Like Very little effort from my part other than reading through and understanding the code and making sure that it's staying on track and, and it's doing a great job. I actually like that it's going through so slowly. Um, a, it allows us to understand what it's doing um, and B, humans have to take time to think through these things. So it makes sense that, that AI would also need to take time to think through these things. Um, we're not necessarily at a place where you can just tell the AI to generate all the code in one go and it can create it, that's, that's not really how the models are designed. It's, it's designed to go through this conversational structure with a back and forth uh, and make iterative improvements on the code, just like humans. So before we move on, one thing I noticed here was that in this latest code in agent.js where they created the apply policy method, um, previously in this version of the file, there was a choose policy in between the sense environment function and the apply policy function. So I was sort of afraid that the models had forgotten the choose policy function um, because you'd expect it to sort of go in order like that. However, the next task that the tech lead created was to implement that policy selection. Um, and then we can see down here 
it put the policy selection back where it was originally in this file prior to apply policy and after sense environment. So interesting little quirk there where it momentarily removed the stub for choose policy, um, but it does always add this little other methods down at the bottom, which is sort of a catch-all for anything that it's not implementing at the moment. You can see that in play here in the sense environment as well. It knows that it's already provided the code for sense environment, um, but it's sort of uh, cutting back on the amount of tokens that it's spitting out by replacing uh, pre-existing code with this, this comment that says existing implementation. So clearly OpenAI has trained it to do that. Additionally, this choose policy method is actually pretty smart um, for, the, for this stage in the implementation, saying sensory, if it, basically, if it's night in the Minecraft world, um, then the current policy should be survival. Like, you just want to survive the night. Um, if the Minecraft world indicates that the agent is hungry, that means it's low on its, its hunger metric, um, then it needs to, to find food, obviously, to fill up that hunger metric. Um, otherwise, it implements this sort of default policy. Probably not going to have a default policy. Uh, ultimately, it'll always choose some policy, whether that's exploration um, or mining, resource gathering. Um, but for now, I think this is fine. One thing I want to point out in this latest code is that since I've been skipping the review step, um, the the coder agent has stopped adding the doc strings and other documentation into the file. Um, so again, hilariously similar to a real developer. Uh, if, there, if there's no review, they start to get lazy. <laughs> all right, so lastly here, I just want to give you an idea of what, what type of information I'm giving all three of these GPTs um, so that they understand the design of the software from the start. You can use GPTs to help you generate this documentation especially like the initial formatting, but I found that it's really necessary for me to go in and make sure it's perfect um, prior to beginning the actual coding. I've started using plant UML syntax. Uh, you can see it here on the left. Not, not really important to, to go over the details here, but this is nice because you have the text version of the diagram, which you can feed to these text-based models. It's very dense information. So in a, a small amount of tokens, you're able to give it a lot of information about the design of the software, and that's really key. Um, but then the other nice thing is then we have sort of the human readable form of the diagram here in the, the preview window of VS Code. Um, so there's, a, there's VS Code extensions for handling plant UML. Um, so if you're familiar with, with VS Code, you can use that method. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully this gives you a glimpse into how powerful this new feature is for ChatGPT. Uh, if you're interested in more updates on my projects or more videos like this one, I recommend subscribing to my Substack. I'll leave the link in the description. Uh, thanks again, and I'll catch you next time.